Okay, my name is Bernard Menezes, Computer Science. Um, so I did teach all the four semesters, of beginning autumn 2020. And I taught a total of three different courses in those, so one course got repeated. Um, I was in for a real shock because uh, it required a complete change in my style. So, you know, over 30 years I've never used slides in my life and I just couldn't stand the idea because I've, you know, I've had some very bad experiences as a student where people would bring those transparencies and just, you know, flood you with all of those like 160 per hour or something. It was just uh, something I didn't exactly get excited and, you know, I wasn't excited about. And all of a sudden, I found that I had to prepare these 600 odd slides for my computer architecture course. So everything went against, uh, you know, against me, actually. First, it was a core course, 130 students. It had a lab, you know, a lab uh, part also together with the theory course. Um, computer science, um, you know, the students are pretty bright, so you better be, you know, absolutely sure about what you are saying. And probably the worst thing was this business of pre-recorded lectures. This is another thing that I just couldn't stand. So we were told, actually there was a lot of confusion at the start of the semester. We were told that it'll be pre-recorded. Somebody said it might be live. Then somebody said again, no, no, it's going to be pre-recorded. Then somebody said, uh, you know, there'll be a final exam, which will be in some, we will take care of everything. The Institute said of the final exam, don't worry about it. Just have some, uh, you know, in semester evaluations. So I just played along with all that. And um, the next thing I knew was at, towards the, you know, the midpoint of the semester, they said, you know, everything is your responsibility. You're supposed to hold all the exams, all the quizzes, all the final exam and everything. And here I was a little bit lax with the initial quizzes um, in the hope that, you know, the main evaluation will be the final and presumably they would be at one location or, you know, depending on where they stayed, uh, they would be all shipped to a particular place and the exam would be held there in an offline uh, fashion, but that didn't actually happen. Um, and the other thing that I didn't like at all was these pre-recorded sessions because I'm used to a lot of interaction. I mean, I ask a lot of questions and I expect to get a lot of questions and I enjoy the thrill of asking and answering the questions. And all of a sudden I find myself, you know, uh, isolated in these four walls and just talking to myself. And then I found like a one and a half hour lecture would be over in half an hour. And I started getting these real guilt pangs. Uh, you know, what am I really doing? I mean, I'm being, you know, paid my full salary, but I'm just doing one third of the lecture. And um, I had a hard time convincing myself that I was doing the right thing. And then I actually, um, you know, talked to the students and I said, look, are you really satisfied with what's happening? I mean, for some reason, I don't feel I'm doing the right thing. Then he said, sir, can you have an online tutorial session? So I did that. I had an online tutorial session, and there was, I think, good attendance. And of course, the lab was also online. And uh, then they said, can you have a question answer online session? So I then went to that. But uh, from the very beginning, I was concerned that in this remote mode, I might lose many of the 130 students in the class. And I really don't know anything about them and where they are and whether they're listening to me or the, you know, the pre-recorded lectures and so on. So I took the decision, and again, this is something very different from what I normally do, to give a quiz every week. So every week there was a five minute or 10 minute quiz at the very start of the week. Initially, they, you know, I gave it on Thursday, then they said, sir, can you have it on Monday so that we can review the material on the weekend and so on. So I was very happy to hear that. And um, you know, I did have the uh, quiz on Monday, Monday at 11 or something. And um, so I expected, so there was also an assignment every week. One theory assignment, one lab assignment. Basically the goal was not so much to evaluate people, but to engage them. Because I had this real, real feeling, you know, fear, that they might just vanish. Like about 30 students out of the 130 would vanish. So I was very curious to know what happened after the first quiz. And believe it or not, except for two students, everybody else gave the quiz. So I thought that was a sort of a little bit of a triumph. And the same thing with the assignments. And then it's like, you know, it, it's like you're brushing your teeth. You just get used to it every day. So every week, the students were used to getting an assignment and having a quiz. And they settled into that routine quite uh, nicely. And um, the performance was decent. And then I was in for quite a bit of a shock in the final exam. 
So uh, normally what I did is because, you know, since I wasn't uh, actually teaching uh, physically, uh, what I decided to do was to have some easy questions, like I always do, but the easy questions would be easier than the usual exam. And then the hard questions would be harder than the usual exam. And to my consternation, what I found was that the performance was actually very, very good in the final. I've never had a class where, um, what, 12 out of 130 got over a 90. So usually my final exams would be something like, and this is like over 30 years, my final exam would be the highest grade would be 90, uh, would be 80. So here I had uh, 12 out of 130 students getting above 90. And I had three students getting a perfect score, 100 out of 100. And I mean, this included all the difficult questions. So I was really surprised and happy. Uh, so this was the first semester. The only negative thing, and nobody's talked about it right now, but it was a concern to me, and I'm sure to most of my colleagues, and that was this business of cheating. So now how do you really handle this? I did not realize that, you know, I just took them, you know, I just trusted them in the initial couple of weeks when I gave the quiz. And part of the reason was, as I said, it was not so much to evaluate people, but to engage them. And uh, for some reason, I thought that 20% of the grade would be on the um, in-semester stuff and 80% on the final. And of course, all that changed midway through the course. And uh, the first couple of quizzes, I have reasons to believe that it wasn't proctored very well and there was quite a bit of cheating. But then the institute gave us some pretty good guidelines and um, you know some new technologies were available, et cetera. I had very aggressive proctoring and uh, the performance, I mean, the amount of cheating, to the best of my knowledge, decreased substantially after about three weeks or so. Uh, I wouldn't say there was no cheating at all. In fact, in the final exam, there was a case um, of a student, actually there was probably just one exam, one case of a student cheating. And there was one person who was an accomplice who helped the student to cheat. And they both admitted it. Of course, the one who actually copied just broke down in an online meet that I had with them. So this is one of the big challenges in this uh, online teaching, I think. I'm not sure whether it's been totally solved. But here is a recommendation I would make. And that is, you know, the students keep telling me all the time that so in, you know, these guys cheated in this way and these guys cheated in that way. Believe it or not, the students are extremely creative. And we faculty do not know how they are actually cheating. I mean, we know five ways in which they are cheating, but there are probably 50 ways and increasing all the time. So I would very strongly suggest this to the institute that you get a small committee, don't make it too large, a small committee of just students. You know, students who are in the know of all these things. Because I keep hearing it all the time, but I'm not that interested in knowing about every single way of cheating. And ask them to enumerate all these ways of cheating and to figure out if there is indeed any solution to this problem. Because if we are going to go online, and I, that's what I'm coming to next, if we are going to go online in the future, then I think having an effective evaluation, uh, you know, a sort of an evaluation that is fair and reasonable is important. So we should know how people might cheat, and we have so much talent here to cheat. Uh, we should find out how they're doing it, and maybe the students themselves can suggest ways of circumventing the cheating, you know, getting around, I mean, of detecting the cheating. Of course, there are ways of cheating and then circumventing the cheating, and then there are ways of detecting the cheating. And I'm sure the students will give you tremendous input. This committee of students will fan out and ask the other students, you know, they know who's the ones who are doing this in a big way. And uh, I think that might help a great deal. Uh, another thing is um, about the hybrid classes. I'm actually, uh, I think that's a viable thing. I think we can do that. Uh, it helps a great deal. This is a little bit related, correct me if I'm wrong, to the flipped classroom model. So you have your lectures, which are pre-recorded. The only uh, uh, difference over here would be they are not just pre-recorded lectures, but they are live lectures, which are recorded. So you give them access to these live recorded lectures, they can see it, and then you can have something, to the equivalent of a tutorial, where they can come and you know we can all discuss this at some point. So that's the typical flipped classroom model, correct me if I'm wrong, the flipped uh, classroom model. But I've always been for uh, physical teaching in a physical classroom. So I'm sure we could combine the two for various reasons, like you know the faculty time, time can be saved and things like that. And given that we, have, we uh, live in a country that is this large, that the IIT system is so good, I mean the education in IIT, 
and people around, there are so many students around the country who need this kind of education. I think the lessons that we have learned from this online teaching can be used to maybe teach a class of, so besides teaching your own students live, I mean physically, you can teach live students across the country. And in this sense, I think IIT can benefit a great deal. I mean, it could be a combination of flip mode and online. Uh, but I think, I think Professor Bapit has already mentioned that in the context of his finance, uh, finance courses, where there are a lot of part-time students and you know, students from industry. So there's a combination of the online and the uh, flipped sort of thing. So we could attempt such a thing for our regular courses. For example, um, now I might teach, you know, the CS is a very popular minor amongst all the students on this campus. So I could easily see myself teaching a minor course in CS with 100 or 150 students. And uh, obviously the standard of the minor course is not exactly the same as what you teach to the CS students. So the same thing can be beamed to students across the country who are in CS. So let's say 500 students can benefit, 500 students across the country plus 150 students on campus can all be listening to your lectures and they can be interacting. And the ones who are off campus or you know, remote, they need not be interacting. It depends on you because I mean, if there are too many questions in, in uh, one and a half hour, you can be just doing nothing else but answering questions. So maybe we can just entertain questions from the in-class students and the uh, off-campus students can put it on a chat session and then the TAs, this of course assumes that you've got very good TAs. The uh, TAs could then answer the questions um, just after the class or maybe uh, through email or through Piazza or something like that. So I think um, that's more or less what I have and I guess my time is up. Thank you. <laughs> I can't help um, asking whether your final exam marks were better because of cheating or because of the quizzes that were going on all the time. No, I think, uh, I think they took it. Uh, I really have reasons to feel, uh, to believe that they took it very seriously because not only the um, exams and the quizzes, but also the project. I mean, this is really remarkable because, I mean, you know, you've got students. Uh, my course project is a team project. It involves about five students in a team. So I usually have large projects because I don't want to have too many teams. So like five students, they have to collaborate and interact over, over Microsoft Teams. And, um, you know, and then I had a Viva. So in the Viva, you can ask all sorts of probing questions to really figure out how much they've done. And they really seem to have accomplished, at least half the teams accomplished a great deal in that.